This time on Road and Race, we compare standard brakes to performance brakes by showing how each hold up after multiple stops and how they perform at the track. Hello and welcome to another episode of Road and Race. In this episode, we'll be testing performance brakes versus stock brakes. So we'll be doing that through a series of 0-60 braking tests and seeing how the different setups perform at the track. Yep, so the plan is we've got our stock Nissan 350Z behind us. It's got stock discs, stock pads and stock fluid. And we're gonna see how it fares up on these tests. So first up, we took the car on the track in its stock brake setup. So here we are heading out to Bedford Autodrome. It's a uh, fairly long circuit, three miles or so. A lot of long straights, we can get up to quite fast speeds. This car gets up to about 120 miles an hour. So let's talk about the brakes. Just the standard road pads and discs and fluid. And the car does stop you. The problem is, is that after you've really been giving it some, you suddenly find that the pedal goes all mushy. You, you push it, nothing happens. Then you push a bit harder and you hope something's gonna happen and nothing does. And you've then realized that you've overheated your brakes. The pads just can't take the temperatures and it's actually quite scary. So what you end up doing is you end up backing off and it really kind of ruins your day because you just don't know what the brake's gonna do. You've got no confidence they're gonna stop you. And when you're hurtling down a back straight 120 miles an hour, you do want them to stop you. See here, my foot's to the floor, I'm just not, it's not stopping. Also, of just a normal road fluid, it will get hot and start to potentially boil. And if it boils, then you can get air in the fluid. And what happens then is your pedal gets really long. Right now, when I try and brake, the pedal moves almost to the floor before anything really happens. Again, it's not what you want, because it just kind of ruins your day because you want a nice, consistent, firm pedal so you can apply the brakes and they work, and it just, it just doesn't. Right, so now Neil's been out on the track with the, the stock brakes and we've identified the problems we've got there. It's time to do a further test. This is the standard AMS braking test. So what we'll do is we'll do 10 stops and we'll measure where the car stops on number one, five and 10. So this will basically assess the performance of the brakes as they get hotter. So we sent you out to do this one, didn't we? Yep, as I seem to be the little test mule when it comes <laughs> to uh, driving, obviously happy to oblige. Yeah. The flags show where the car stopped. Run 1 was 26.3 metres, run 5 was 27.8 metres, and run 10 was 33.9 metres. After run 10, we measured the temperature of the discs, which showed a range of temperature around 250 degrees centigrade. So how did you feel about those results? Um, I thought initially they performed quite well, mm. the standard brakes, but as, as sort of the runs went on and they got hotter, I could definitely feel the fade and also they smell quite bad as well. Oh really? Yeah. Um, so I think there's, from the start to the finish, I think there's gonna be a big gap in performance. Because yeah. from, the, from the stats, it's seven and a half meters further they stopped on that's the 10th run. That's quite a distance, yeah, really. From a safety point of view as well, that's a, yeah. that's a big consideration. And you think if you're, the whole point of this car is as a, a track car primarily, and over a, a few laps, the brakes are gonna get hot and you're gonna feel that on track quite mm. a bit. Mm -hmm. So mm. you're gonna have to adjust your braking points, which isn't ideal. So let's fit some performance brakes and see how that gets on.
yeah, good work on doing those brakes, Neil. You did a good job as always. And I think they look really cool, those discs. Yeah, they're really nice, aren't With they? With the little grooves in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So I went back to the track to test how these new brakes performed. So we're back at Bedford Autodrome to see how the new discs and pads and hoses and fluid all uh, work out. Oh, the brake pedal is so much nicer now. It was kind of squishy and it went a long way. Nothing really happened before. But now this uh, braided hose and the new fluid, oh, it's really, really accurate. You put in 10% of effort, you get 10% of braking, 50%, 50% of braking. It allows you to give you much more control. It's really nice now. Got a hairpin coming up now. It's a really great test of the brakes. Brake late. Oh, <laughs> that stops you really quick. That is really good. One of the problems I had last time was that the brakes would fade after a couple of laps, but I've been out, you know, it's my full flap now, and there's no fade at all. So you can really trust that when you hit the brakes, you're actually going to stop. Oh, it's so much fun now. So much better. These are the BSD brake discs, and they've got little slots in them, and that helps with uh, getting rid of the braking gases. Bedford Autodrome's got a lot of hairpins, so the brakes take a real punishment. But these are really holding up. Six laps now, no fade at all, which is really impressive, actually. I don't think it could go on and on and on forever. I mean, it's not a dedicated, you know, track pad. But for track days, you know, I've got loads of confidence in them. You know, I've, I've got no, no fear that they're not going to stop me. Just got to worry about getting around the corners now. <laughs> So very impressive results there, Neil, on mm, track. Mm. Um, obviously did a lot better. So I think now we should sort of delve into the, the more science uh, side of things. I know you like science. I love science. <laughs> so, okay, so let's redo the AMS tests, but now with the performance brakes. As you can see from the flags, there was very little difference between the stops. In fact, only 60 centimeters. After the 10th stop, the disc temperature was also about 250 degrees centigrade. So how did the brakes feel then then? Well, compared to the stock test I did, obviously it was exactly the same test. Uh, it was much better. Uh, the first stop, so when the brakes were cold, uh, the bite was great. And then throughout the whole test, there was just much more consistency. So it felt like the car was stopping equally each time, even on the, the last couple of um, braking tests when the brakes were at their hottest. So I was impressed. Yeah, but as you can see from the results, I mean, there's very little uh, deviation between the, uh, all the runs. I mean, there's uh, about 60 centimetres between yeah. the first and the 10th run, which is you know, great, you know, yeah. very consistent. It's nothing, is it? If my math's correct, it's only 2.3%. 2.3%. Yeah, so essentially they're, they're stopping you the same every single time. Yeah, yeah. no, I was really impressed. Um, it's obviously made a great improvement. So do you know about R90 approval? R90? What's that, some sort of motorbike or something? No, I've never heard of R90. What is it? Well, I'll tell you now. <laughs> it's a European legislation, but it basically means that they've met a certain standard. Yeah. You know, the pad will bite well from cold, okay. and you don't need to tell your insurance company you fitted this pad. Okay. Some track pads, um, you, you may or may not be R90 approved. So if you do put them on your car, you have to ring your insurance company, and then they might say yes, they might say no. Yeah. But most likely your insurance premium will probably go up. So basically, if you're like us, you've got a car, you want to track it, you want to get some, you know, some safe pads which are insurance friendly, you just stick on a set R of R90, R90 approved brake pads. And R90 means that they'll break well from cold. So some track pads, you need to get some warmth into them before yep. they break well, but yep. that's not what you want on a cold Sunday morning when you're just popping out to the uh, news agent. <laughs> no, not at all. And, but, and that's because they've been tested. Yeah, so yeah, they, they make a certain tested. standard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, should be, they should be as good or better than the uh, original manufacturers. So really, it's, it's a no-brainer, isn't it, really? Just yeah, to yeah. go for R90. Yeah, and these EBC Blue Stuff pads do have R90 approval, so Excellent. it kind of makes sense. Well, you learn something new every day, and Neil has educated me. <laughs> <laughs>